Ladies and gentlemen, the largest high school marching band in the region and one of the most exciting bands in mid-Michigan, the H.H. High School Charger Homecoming marching band. Homecoming game, the Chargers taking on Saginaw Heritage, the Heritage Hawks. Dow High coming into this game at 3-3 three and three overall in the year, 3-2 and two in the Saginaw Valley League. Saginaw Heritage, meanwhile, 2-4 two and 2-2 four and two and two in the league. Hi, this is Dave Marsh bringing you the action along with the old ball coach, Frank Aldemore. And Coach, uh, just looking forward to a, an exciting homecoming game tonight, are we? Well, usually homecoming brings out the best in, in all players. You know, when it's their homecoming, they want to look good in front of a large crowd. So we're looking forward to a pretty good ball game tonight. Uh, Heritage has come on strong the last couple of weeks and have really played quite well, uh, probably for the last month since they played Midland in that 7-0 rainstorm over there. So that's good on their part. They have a good sized team. They have uh, some pretty good athletes and they should be a formidable opponent for uh, the Chargers tonight. Well, coach, um, what uh, what do you see as uh, the keys to the game for each team to find success tonight? Well, when, when we you look at keys to the game and that becomes always the important part as a coach, you kind of set up and you say, okay, what do I have to do to win the ball game? How am I going to do it? For Heritage, and this is kind of interesting, their defense has to show up. And that means that they've allowed other teams way too many yards in in getting the ball game going. So they their defense has to show up and play a little tougher. Second off, if they have to force Dow to pass. Now you take a look at that because Dow's percentage is 31%. And good football coaches see 31% and they put nine in the box and they say, good luck. Throw the ball if you want, because then we're gonna pick it off or we're gonna rush you and, and get a sack. So they're going to force Dow to pass, and then they have to win that turnover game. They have to intercept that pass. They have to get fumbles. They have to get sacks, uh, run a punt back, uh, block a kick, those kind of things to win the ball game tonight. And, I, and, and they're capable of doing it. Now, for Dow, and I think this is very important, they have to control that line of scrimmage. Dow runs the football. And, if, and, you know, interesting stat. Last week in the NFL, 13 wins, one loss to the team that had the most rush attempts. Is that right? 13 yeah. won. And that was, a, 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 and that's been pretty normal, 10 4, uh, you know, 10 4, 10 3, depending on how many games you played. So that's a, that's a very important part. And that fits right into Dallas' plan. They have to get better on third down. They give up. Too many third downs the other team and don't convert their own third downs. And that's been their, their failing all year. And then I think you got to have a big game from Gavin Grochak. I mean, I think he has to run for 100 yards and at least present the idea that, hey, I can, I, I'm on a run pass mission. Uh, and if he does that, he, I, he, is, he is the straw that stirs <laughs> this drink. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? He he's a pretty good ball player. He's an excellent runner and has a an opportunity to really shine. Well, we'll uh, we'll see how the the keys play out as we scan the crowd here on a chilly night here at Midland Community Stadium. Uh, we mentioned uh, we were here last week and it was a perfect fall night. Not quite so much tonight. It's uh, it's chilly, under 50 degrees. It's windy. Um, got a nice crowd filtering in here to brave the elements and and uh, see this game. So we're going to send it down to the Dow High Marching Band, who will play our national anthem.
Dow High Charger Marching Band, 205 strong this year. And uh, we'll get to see more of the band at halftime as we'll bring you uh, their halftime performance as well as all the other homecoming festivities that will take place here tonight. Um, Coach, you had mentioned uh, Gavin Groshek is being a key for the Chargers. He comes into the game with uh, 179 yards rushing and a touchdown. Um, you can also look for Alex Huss to uh, carry the pigskin a little bit. He leads the team with 87 carries, 418 yards, and four touchdowns. He averages 4.8 yards per carry, so that's a really nice average. He has been a little dinged up, and he's had a little bit of a hip pointer, and that's, that, that will slow you down. A hip pointer always figure four to six weeks before your and he, he got dinged up early in the season. He's played pretty well, but he he's gives an honest effort. Uh, the one stat that really stands out, in that, and this is that both Dow and Heritage, their offenses. Uh, Dow is sixth in the league in offense, and Heritage is seventh in the league in offense. Now, uh, both teams have played good opponents, good defensive opponents, so that's been a struggle for them. It's going to be interesting to see exactly what happens. Number nine for, uh, for Heritage, Mark Queen Evans is, a, is, is their outstanding runner. And how well Dow is able to handle him will be interesting. And uh, I thought the, I like the quarterback as a runner, Van Tiflin, number seven. Uh, he, has, he has some pretty good ability. So we're going to see a, a, a game of tonight of two teams that are pretty equal in, in status and in abilities. Also, uh, Coach uh, Watkins had, for Dow High, had mentioned number, uh, watching for number one, Brian Cole. He's a, he's a receiver, but he uh, he also carries the ball with regularity. He's got 324 yards rushing, 7.2 yards per carry, and a touchdown. So uh, Evans and Cole are a couple of guys to really watch out for from the Hawks. Coming into the game, mentioned Van Tiflin, the quarterback for Heritage. Um, he's completing 42% of his passes, 177 yards, two touchdowns and three interceptions. Um, so neither team with a particularly high completion percentage uh, throwing the ball. And uh, we'll see how that holds up here tonight to uh, run oriented teams. Um, and with a stiff breeze uh, tonight, that could could affect the passing game as well. So we'll see. One thing you want to remember, you know, you take a look at the percentage, but you also have to take a look at the number. And that is, okay, uh, for example, Van Tiflin is 16 for 26. Well, if you are, if you are 16 for 26, uh, that's only 10 plays that went for zero yardage. If you are uh, 50 for 100, that's 50 plays that right. went for zero yardage. So there's, a, you know, a, a point there where you say, okay, uh, they're not throwing the ball very much. Darren Savage doing the kickoff duties for the Chargers. Boots it. Big hit, but he uh, stays on his feet to Zach Vega, and he'll return it about to the 33-yard line, and the Hawks will uh, take over first and 10 from their own 33. And uh, as we get underway here, and the quarterback is number seven, Stephen Van Tiflin. He's a junior. It's the Charger uh, front. They uh, are playing a pretty tight defensive formation to start off. A handoff and a great defensive play for the Chargers. Tyler Reisig with a big stop for uh, Dow High, and it's going to be a big loss all the way Boy, back he, to the 30. He had a, a great path to the football. Great path to the football. Dow's change your defense a little bit is is uh, not playing their traditional three-man front. They're playing a four-man front, and I think this is a better defense for them to play. Rising on the defensive line, uh, Billy Schutte, number nine, also on the interior as a swarm of Chargers uh, hauls down Mark Marqueen Evans after a uh, gain back to the original line of scrimmage. It'll bring up third and 10 for the Hawks. 
That first down loss is always a crucial situation as a, as a coach because now you're looking at second and long in your opening series and it throws out every plan that you have. Alan Corbet on the outside linebacker spot. Back to pack. Van Tiflin fires it. It's complete. No, it's dropped. Tried to find uh, Brian Cole, who's just a sophomore out there. Would have been close to the first down, but he's unable to hang on. And the Chargers forced the Hawks to punt. Three and out on the first possession. Dow High defense got to be pleased with that uh, Very, initial that, series. Not only uh, three and out, but three and no gain. Right. Joel Miller, number 14, and Gavin Groshek, number 20, back deep to receive the punt for the Chargers. Sam Spradlin doing the punting duties for the Hawks. Nice, high, long kick, beautiful punt. Fielded at the 27, bobbled, and then regained. And then uh, Miller brought down immediately by Mitchell Binder. And so a beautiful punt. Uh, Dow High was in position to maybe get some good field position there, but a uh, good special teams play by the Hawks, and Dow will take over first and 10 on their own 26-yard line. Spratlin not only is a great punter, he's an excellent extra point. He has 15 extra points for the year, so that uh, tells you that he's he's got a leg on him and yeah. could be a threat to, for a field goal or yeah. something like that as we go along. Groshek, the quarterback for the Chargers. Courtney, Courtney Ockert in motion. Handoff to Huss. Nice gain on the first play, and Huss is, is on off to the races. He's being chased down from behind. He stumbles, finally uh, hauled down, but not after a huge gain. Sprawl finally catches him, but uh, Huss busts up the middle, found the hole, and he just uh, bolted ahead for a huge gain all the way down to the 15 yard line. This is a great run by Alex Huss, but again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna watch the end of the play. I'm gonna bet he got hurt. I'm gonna bet he blew a tire. You're gonna watch this as he goes along. He's gonna catch the ball and now he's, he gets up into the shoots, a great run, great blocking up front. What a tremendous job there by, uh, and now he gets in, now he's in the open. He's got the touchdown. But watch what happens right here. See right there, hmm. he's yeah. hurt. He got. I'm sure that hip really bothered him again. Rogowski, 34, with a great lead block to spring him. Burrell on the carry for the Chargers off to the left side. A nice pickup on first down. He's going to get about six or seven yards. Got to like that on first down. Lucas Burrell has a different motor than most players. He's an excellent, excellent defensive player, and and give him the ball 20 times, and I guarantee you'll have 100 yards. Lucas he, Bur he has a different motor. He just carries you. Lucas Burrell, a 6'2", 215 senior. Number eight, John Brandon checks into the game for the Chargers, and he'll split wide to the left. Zach Hook, number five, split out wide to the right. Brandon in motion. Groshek's going to keep it. Tries to get the edge on the outside. Still on his feet. Finally hauled out of bounds. Good pursuit by the Hawks. Number three, could Kyle Kajawa, or excuse me, Kyle Telder leading the way. Blew up that play. It's going to be a loss for Dow. Bring a uh, goes all the way back to the 13. We'll bring up a third and seven situation for the Chargers. We're in the early going here. Dow High's first possession, eight and a half minutes remaining in the first quarter. Groshek under center. It's a pitch to Huss. Huss tries to get the edge, dives towards the marker, and I think he's going to get it. It's going to depend on the spot. Great effort on the part of Alex Huss. I'm glad to see Alex Huss back in there again. Yeah. And that it will be a first down for the Chargers. First and goal. Ball just inside the five-yard line. Mentioned Huss, the leading ground gainer for 
the Chargers with 418 on the season and uh, a couple of uh, big gains here in the early going. He's quickly adding to that total. Two wide outs out to the right for the Chargers. Groshik again under center. Hand off to Huss. Tries to pick his way and good job running. He had to hesitate, good patience to find the hole and then he darted over to the right and it's touchdown, six points, Dow high. That was quite a run, an excellent run. He got up into the chute, the hole broke back, he broke back into the hole. He's, he's one of the, the, the better runners that we've seen this year. Uh, it's, it, like I said, it's a shame he's hurt, has been hurt, but now he's back and and that's a big plus for the Dow offense. 66, uh, Devin Thompson doing the place kicking. He's uh, extra point, uh, it was kind of a line drive and uh, it's gonna be no good. Now here's gets a, there's a good block up in front by the by the fullback, and now you get right up into the seam and you just cleaned it out. Again, uh, 34, Robert Rogowski doing a great job as the lead blocker in his fullback position. An excellent job by that Dow High line. So very impressive drive to start the game for the Chargers. Got to be encouraged by that. They did not mess around on that drive. Well, that was nice and easy. Power football, just, nice, just bam, go ahead and stop it. Well, the first run Curtis really, didn't. the first run really set it up. And again, Alex Huss has that ability to see that hole, and he has the quickness to get into the hole, through the hole, and then he, he's he's a real threat. Yeah, that was that was impressive. The, I like it, like that patience to we saw the, just the three going full speed. We he, saw the three plays. You know, he ran the long run. Yeah. Then he got the first down, and then he was able to get up into the end zone. So with just under eight minutes to go in the first quarter, Dow High on top, 6 nothing. Darren Savage will be kicking off again for the Chargers. The onside kick. The ball's loose. And I believe Heritage is going to recover it. Try to catch the Hawks by surprise with an early onside kick, but uh, the Hawks quick to recover and they'll take over on their own 49 yard line. It's a good try. Good try. You, know, it, 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 uh, you take a gamble early in the game, you figure your defense is pretty tough, gonna do the job, so. Rogowski on the Number 34, outside linebacker position for Dow High. Caleb Richard, he's just a sophomore, number 22 on the right side. Quick run, and that is blown up. Great job, and that is uh, Rogowski again, blowing that play up for the Chargers. He's playing strong tonight. Very strong, very good. Thirty-two. Alan Corbet checks in at the right linebacker position now. Sixty-one. Alan Hooper also on that defensive line. Joel Miller, number fourteen, out here at a corner position. Another quick run, and that is shut down quickly by Lucas Burrell. Charger. Run defense come to play here well, in the early first, going. They're showing energy, and Heritage is not. Heritage is uh, in the first series of downs that they've had so far, and this, this, and we're now into the second series. They've shown absolutely no energy coming off the ball or uh, their running back running. Third and ten for the Hawks. Two running plays have netted nothing so in this drive so far. Back to pass. Looking downfield, fire is caught, but it's gonna be well short of the first down. Caleb Richard on the coverage. Ben Tiflin's pass was completed to uh, McCarrick. And uh, the Hawks will punt again. This is always amazing to me that you get third down, you have to have a series, something called a stick route. 
that you're going to get to the sticks yeah. and you're going to complete the first down and catch the ball, get the first down. You can't run less than a stick route and you can't throw less than a stick route. Another high spiral will hit and take a heritage bounce. It's uh, downed right there by Dan Sproul. Might have wanted to let that bounce again. May have cost a few yards, but the Chargers will take over deep in their own territory at the 13. 6.26 remaining here in the first quarter. Offensive line for the Chargers includes number 65, Justin Scott. Well, what's nice is Dow's defense now is not giving up a yard off at rushing and the one pass completion. Quick handoff and uh, read quickly by the Hawks. It's going to be uh, no gain for Alan Corbet. Well carried by Charger 131 yards rushing Alex on the season. 5.7 yards per carry. Well, that time, no gain. Number six, Lance Drake splits out wide to the right for the Chargers. It's a pitch to Huss, picks his way forward again and uh, busts ahead close to the first down. He's going to be a little bit short, but uh, again, he, uh, good patience waiting for the hole to open. And when he saw it, he just burst ahead. Well, not only good patience, but also another gear. He, he was running through, he got into the hole, and all of a sudden he took off and had another gear that uh, gave him a chance to almost get the first down. And now you got a third and one, which is, remember I told you about those third downs. Right. Yep. You know, the third downs, this has been Dow's weak spot in their first half of the season, the inability to convert third downs. He did convert a big one earlier in the first drive. Let's see what they do here on third and short. Quick handoff, diving ahead for the first down is Corbet, and the Chargers will move the chains. And also look for, uh, on the offensive line, uh, see some action out of Donny Doughty for the Chargers, at number 79. Number 68, Chase McNamara. Mention Thompson, 65, Justin Scott. Also see some action on the line. Groshek back to pass. Dumps it off to Richard. Good, quick move, another good move, and Richard drives ahead for the first down. Nifty little run after the catch by sophomore Caleb Richard. See, I think Caleb Richard you know, is, is a player to watch for the future. Excellent sophomore, it's good size, and could be a good player along the way. I, in the first game of the year uh, that was here, he just did an outstanding job, both as a safety and as a running back. Number five, Zach Hook is Dow's leading receiver. He's caught seven balls for 157 yards, great average, over 22 yards per catch. Huss on the carry. He's going to pick up a couple. Alex Huss on the carry for the Chargers. Working that left side on the running game quite a bit. Huss will get it over so the 40 yard two line. Two we'll call it, we'll call it second and seven. Remember what we talked about Number before? The, the first key of the game for Dow to win, and that is to control the line of scrimmage. And boy, are they doing it doing an outstanding job. Groshek in the shotgun. He's gonna keep it, trying to get the outer edge. Oh, I just tripped up. Had a chance to pick up some good yardage, but uh, hauled down at the shoe tops by uh, Blake Carmichael, Jr., out of uh, Heritage gonna lose a little bit actually and it'll be a third and eight situation so a little different than uh, the third and one in the previous series well the execution on that play and the execution on the other quarterback run that was down on the other end of the field is that Grocheck is running to the sideline and really that play is designed to 
to, for him to cut it up. Groshek's going to keep it, finds a hole, still on his feet. Oh, man, talk about a burst wow. of speed. Uh, he, he knew where the sticks were right there. He just uh, darted ahead into hot territory. I see there's the difference in Groshek turning his shoulders square to the line of scrimmage, finding the hole, running in the hole, and getting there, as opposed to running to the sideline. And that's what he does best. And that's, that's the kind of thing that he is going to excel at. Dow High with another uh, nice drive here. Drove uh, the length of the field, their first possession. And uh, they have marched into Heritage Territory here on their second possession. Groshek keeps. Oh, this time he's hauled down. Again, Carmichael for second. Uh, he showed that little burst again, but Carmichael uh, wrapped him up and, uh, and uh, tossed him down after a two yard game. And that play right there, we, have, we used to have a rule, everybody gets to the linebacker. you got to get to the linebacker to make that play run. And nobody got to the linebacker. Two minutes to go here in the first quarter. Second and eight chargers. Time of possession clearly on their side so far. Groshek back to pass, has his man. And then he fumbles. It was John Brandon with the reception. He was hit immediately. The ball pops loose and then goes back to the 40. So he had the, the necessary yardage for a first down, but the uh, forced fumble popped it back, and it'll bring up third and two for Dow. Nice throw by Groshik. Right on the money. See what Coach Jason Watkins drums up here on third and two as Dow High looks to move the chains yet again. It's Huss with the ball. Darts ahead. He's going to get the first down. Again, Dow High working that left side, and uh, Huss just kind of picking his way, finding that small sliver of a hole and uh, darting through and picking up the first. Good feet by Huss there. Good feet, good lead block, good feet. Another first down, another controlling third down. And this will probably be the fastest quarter that we will ever have in a football game. <laughs> That is true. A minute to go. Groshek to Huss. And uh, Huss is going to work his way for a couple of yards. Going to get inside the 35 down to the 34. Bring up a second and eight for Dow High. Number 10, Robert Ellibrecht into the lineup for the Chargers. Zach Hook also checking in. Now uh, shifts a lot of players in and out, especially in the, the receiver position. Number six, Lance Drake out wide to the left. He's coming in motion. Groshek rolls to his right. He's under heavy duress. Good move to Santa's feet. He's got a little room to run. And great job by Groshek making something out of nothing. The play blown up almost immediately. And some nifty footwork by Groshek. And the Chargers will get positive yardage on that. It's going to be marked at... Uh, around the 31 and that is the end of the first quarter you are right the fastest, that flew by fastest quarter ever <laughs> well the chargers got to be happy with that uh, first quarter fast or not uh, they're ahead six nothing and just have dominated play their defense uh two three and outs and offense has just uh, chewed up the yardage on the ground. You know, a lot of times teams, they just leave their game on the bus for a while. They just come off, and, and really it does look like Heritage, who had a, a monster game last week, beating Arthur Hill 62-12, is just flat. 
I mean, we don't see the uh, crispness of the hitting, and, and certainly we don't, we've only seen one offensive series, so that's not a, a very good indication of what they can do, but uh, Dow certainly has come to play tonight. Yeah, Dow, Dow has. I'm very impressed with the energy uh, that they have shown, and I know Coach Watkins this week, he had said that was a going to be a big part of it, have a good team game, um, have a lot of energy and attitude and effort, and uh, so far they have shown it. Quick handoff. I think it's Corbet, and he's uh, hauled down. It's going to be close to the first. And uh, they're going to get it. Lucas Burrell. Oh, excuse me. Lucas Burrell, yes, yeah, on the carry. Sorry. But uh, and Burrell will pick up a first down. So the Chargers move the chains once again. If it's third and three, I'm giving it to Lucas Burrell. I don't think I don't think Heritage can stop him. And it's a great combination between Huss and Burrell because they are two very different runners. Thunder and lightning. Uh, Huss is a darter and Burrell mm -hmm. is, excuse me while I run over you and stomp <laughs> on your face while I get there. I'll help you up after. First and 10 Chargers at the 26. And it's Burrell this time again. Driving ahead. Oh, man. That's an example Great of what effort. I'm talking about. You know, he's going to give you that effort. Number 37, Lucas Burrell on the carry. Found a little Lucas bit of a Chargers. hole, and that was just uh, sheer determination to pick up five. Picks up five for the Chargers. Brought down by number 32, Blake Carmichael for the Hawks. Second Caleb Richard the checks the back Hawks. in. He will replace Alan Corbet. Hook number five also back in. So a lot of uh, interchangeable parts at the skill positions for Dow High. Gowski number 34 at the tight end position on the right. Quick handoff to Richard and yeah, no, nowhere to go. Big number 78, Thomas uh, Buginski on the stop. When I say big, I mean it. 6'3", 270. They have some big boys on that defensive front. Nick Lentz, number 71, 5'11", 290. Their scales take some punishment over there. Well, Michael they, Buchanan, 6'3", 265. Whew. Big fellas in the Dow High offensive line doing a great job against that beef. It's a pitch to Burrell. He fumbles the ball. And we'll see what the indication is, and Heritage will take over. Oh, my goodness. That was Carmichael stripping. Carmichael, we've called his name yeah, a lot. He's a good and, player. Uh, so Dow High chews up yardage and time. They start it deep in their own territory, get all the way to the 20, and then uh, we'll cough it up, and uh, the Hawks will take over. Ah. And so uh, Dow High still up 6 nothing here, early going in the second quarter. Trips right now, the look for Heritage. A little swing pass is going to be incomplete. Close to a lateral, good uh, heady play by Caleb Richard to pick that up just in case they call that a pitch, but it is an incomplete pass. I mean, Tiflin's uh, throw just led the receiver a little too much. Second and 10. I don't know if Heritage has, they don't have a lot of offensive yards so far, Coach. They have none. They, well, they, they have one, one reception for five yards, but they have uh, zero yeah, right. yards other than that. Brian Cole split out wide to the right. And Tiflin keeps it, he pitches. And oh, good defensive play by Brennan Miller out on the edge. Held his ground, got a, around the ankles and held on and uh, Nowhere to run. So excellent defensive play by Miller. An outstanding job by the Dow coaches. If that was a play last week that gained a tremendous amount of yardage against Arthur Hill. Seth Dowdy, number 79, comes in for, on the defensive front. 61 Hooper. 
also in there. Gabriel Miller, the inside linebacker position for the Chargers. Back to pass, Van Tiflin. He's going deep on the post, just out of the reach. Intended for a McCarrick. Pretty good coverage by the Chargers. He would have had to put that in perfectly and threw it about a yard too far. And so once again, it's three and out for the Charger defense. And uh, Heritage will be punting with a fourth and 13. Well, I think when you take a look at this, Donnie Doughty went in over the nose, took two players all the way back into the quarterback on his bull rush. Uh, very impressive, very strong. And so the third punt of the game for Spradlin, who's had a couple of booming kicks early on, another nice punt, sends it deep and a great roll for Heritage. Going to go all the way to the 24. When wow, you, shifting the field right there is when Spradlin. When you have a kicker like that, that is a weapon because that just takes care of all your ills. Your offensive ills are taken care of by a, a punter. Yeah, it was impressive. About a 50-yard effort. No return. And so uh, Dauhai, the turnover uh, does not cost the Chargers, but except that they uh, lost an opportunity to score. And they're going to try to uh, to recharge here and uh, keep this offensive offense clicking. It has looked great so far. Mostly on the ground for the Chargers, but mixing in uh, some successful passes here and there. And they've been able to move the chains. Fake handoff. To Huss, and it's Ellibrecht on the carry. Cuts back a little bit, uh, but it's going to end up being no game, maybe a yard. Yeah, we'll call it a yard. So they no. faked the handoff to Huss, and Ellibrecht came around, the, but uh, the Hawks were all over it. Dow has run three lateral plays for no yards. They run a tremendous number of plays straight at Heritage for lots of yards. So sometimes you just gotta say, okay, what's working, what's not working, yeah. and they run, Heritage runs very well laterally. 15, Matthew Deshone into the lineup, split out wide to the left. This time it's Huss, cuts back, tries to drive ahead. He's gonna get out to the 30, so a nice gain. It'll bring up third and four. You'd mentioned a key was Dow, Dow's effort on third downs on both sides of the ball, and they have been very successful. Very successful. Very, um, on both sides. Very pleased to see that because this has been a problem child all year for them. But they're in a rhythm right now. You know, when teams get in a rhythm, uh, it's very difficult to stop them. And they are in a rhythm right now. And so uh, we'll see what uh, third and four brings here. They've been successful running it up uh, between the tackles today so far. It's going to be delay a game. Mm, that hurts because uh, it'll turn a third and really a third and three into a third and eight. You know, it's, it's I have to tell you that when you have a quarterback not under center, and you run a delay count, nobody's fooled. Mm -hmm. Because in shotgun, everybody is, is really, coaches really work hard on watching the ball. When they're under center, it's a different ball game. They listen. You know, yeah. they, no matter how hard it is to teach them that, they still listen. As soon as they hear that regular snap count, they jump. But for the most part, in shotgun, they don't, they don't jump. They're, they're playing the ball because they know the snap of the ball is the whole key to playing good defense. And uh, this time the Chargers will come up short of the first. Tried that left side with Groshik, and he picks up uh, seven needed eight. And the Chargers will be forced to punt. So the delayed game penalty hurt quite a bit there. This Three, is, Travis McNally back to punt for the, the Chargers. The snap has been a problem for Dow this year. 
Cole and well, Telder. Eliminated the snap oh. problem. Yeah, and a huge play for the for Chargers. Lucas How about that? Lucas Burrell. Little trickeration well, by the Chargers, and it works. If you're having trouble with the snap, run the paint. <laughs> that is a great call right there. Great call. Great idea. Lucas Morrell is just going to take the ball, and he is going to pull on, pull a couple people with him. There's the first one right there. He gets out of him. There's the second one. See you later. Steps over hmm. a guy. And... Uh, yeah, the direct snap he had in his mind, I'm going to get the first down. And once he got that, he got greedy, so I'm just going to get some more. And he kept rambling ahead all the way down to the 45-yard line. And now Dow is, is potentially in four-down territory. We'd like to thank tonight's officials. Apparently they already were. <laughs> they, uh, they certainly took, uh, took them by surprise. And boy, that's it. You know, that's... Also a big confidence booster for Dow. They're, they're kind of feeling a little mojo moving the ball. And so you, I think it's a great call well, by Dow's Coach playing. Watkins because just kind of keep that going and build the confidence. The Hawks playing on their heels. And um, they take another step back with that one. Well, Dow is playing with great energy. We've seen that as this first half has gone on. And if they keep it up, then this is going to be an easy ball game for them. They do need to get another score here. Yeah. They need to get this score. This this score right here, because the way this game is going, they could run six minutes off the clock. Huss again looking for that left side. Darts ahead for about three. He sure likes to kind of head outside and then uh, jut back up. Getting a lot of yards today doing just that. Three more now. It'll be bring up seven, second and seven. And Wes Meyer is the center for the Chargers. Snapping the ball to Groshik. And Dowhite mixes it up quite a bit. A little under the center, a little in the shotgun. So that center position, very important in this offense. Groshik rolls to his right. And he cuts back to the left. Still on his feet, and he's going to get the first down. Groshek uh, surveyed the situation. A lot of white jerseys engulfing him, so he takes off to the left and a good nifty run. He's got to like those quick feet of Groshek, does, doesn't he? He is the best runner on the team. Just, you have to turn him loose. He has to, he has to have 20 plays that are his, and, and that's one of his plays. Uh, the broken quarterback, I'm going to throw it. No, I'm not. Here I go. <laughs> First and 10 from the 32. Chargers on the move again. Third impressive drive here the first half. Five minutes remaining in the half. And that's going to be Huss. Finds a little hole. Nice gain on first down once again. All the way down to the 25, maybe the 26. They're just wearing out that left side. Uh, Running left a lot. They found something they like running to that left side. And it's, yeah, Donnie uh, Doty, working. number 79. <laughs> That's what they he's, like? He's a lot to like. 6'3", <laughs> 260, he's a lot to like. He's a senior, and uh, they have been uh, riding that horse so far here in the first half. Gowski tight end on the left side. This time he runs right, does Huss, and nothing doing. This time he does get to. Maybe he'll give him the 25. Another third down for Dow High. It'll be third and three. Still third and four for the Chargers on the Fox 26 yard line. So another big third down here. Chargers driving deep into Hawk territory. The Heritage defense, at some point, you got to get a little tired, don't you? They're on the, they've been out here a long time. Mm. Time of possession overwhelmingly in Dow's favor. Groshek, it's a handoff. Burrell drives ahead. Another first down. You said you liked uh, 
play call at that third and three, third and four to Burrell, and exactly. bam. Exactly. I love the thing I love about Lucas Burrell is that sooner or later you get tired of tackling. <laughs> you know, he just he just pounds on you, and he, he just does I think a fabulous job. The combination of Burrell and Huss is is a great combo, very difficult to stop. I said Alex has been hurt for quite a bit of the year, and uh, we're seeing uh, what Dow can be when he's playing. Yeah, he's he's looking good tonight. Yeah. Burrell again with the carry, breaks a tackle, and he loses the ball. But a Dow high, no, it's still loose. We'll see. No indication yet. Dow thinks they have it. And no, Heritage recovers. Oh. The second time Dow is driven deep in the Heritage territory only to cough it up. That second fumble for Burrell, too. Sometimes you just he's just given that extra, extra get, effort well, in it, traffic. Heck, ball hangs out. And guys are a little just extra. pounding at him. We'll see it on one of the replays along the way that uh, when we do see him run again, we'll see that the ball does hang out there a little bit. So it's that's that's bone crushing. Mm. 258 remaining in the half. Dow has completely dominated this game, and yet it's uh, just a six nothing ball game right at this point. Give me a flag on that play. Let's see what they call if the Chargers jump first. Uh, no, they were drawn off sides. Shooty saw that yeah. movement yeah. on the interior line, and he uh, darted ahead. Good heads up Pretty play by Shooty. Move by Bill, Billy Shooty. Pretty sharp move. Very heads up. Yep. So it's back to the six yard line. And uh, <laughs> the way Heritage offense has struggled here in the first half, they cannot afford these penalties. And up to the fullback, he has stood up right away. It's like uh, Jacob, nine, Jacob, Jacob Laria on the stop. The 32, Alan Corbet also in there. Shooty also uh, helping out on that tackle. Bring up a second and 15. Clock continues to tick down here. Two and a half to go in the half. And around, and still on his feet is Cole. He's dangerous. He's going to get back about to the maybe a little beyond the original line of scrimmage. Give him six yards on that one. Bring up a second and nine. Well, that's play or third and nine. Excuse me. That's a play that he's got all his yards on, and. Uh, Brian Cole has scored five touchdowns this year, both receiving and uh, and running that reverse right there. Although they they're going to have to find a way to get him out there quicker because Dow's pursuit has been fantastic. Well, Dow's running to the football. A minute and a half to go in the half. Back to pass, Van Tiffen. He's drilled. It's live, and Dow will recover. Oh. Defensive play. Looked like Miller. Miller drills the quarterback, pops the ball loose. Huge play by the Charger defense. Oh man, he just came flying in. Oh, what a great play. That's, Miller is going to get the fumble, but it was 62. And so, just like that, uh, Dow had uh, turned it over, and they were going to take over at the one-yard line. A minute 19 to go in the half. Great, huge break for the Chargers off a great defensive play. It's Burrell driving ahead. Oh, he's going to be held short. Good defensive stand right there by the Hawks. 
Boy, when he hit that line, as hard as he was going, I thought for sure he was going to bust in there. A timeout would be nice here for the Chargers. Don't. We're under a minute to yeah, go in the you half. You got three plays, and you, you want to get all three plays in if you need them. Drake split out wide to the right. Miller, Brennan Miller to the left, and there will be a timeout called. It's actually Heritage calling the timeout. 44 seconds remaining in the half. And so uh, there's been uh, turnovers have a big, been a big part of this game. Uh, if you look at the uh, enthusiastic Dow High student section on your screen, Dow High's fumbled twice, but a huge play towards the end of this half uh, really could turn things around for Dow High. And you can see on the track the Dow High marching band getting ready to head out for their halftime performance. Chargers Brain Trust uh, drawing up a play here on second and goal from the one. Well, the play is Husk behind Caleb Richard. That's the play. Left. Left, yep. And sure enough, there it is. And Huss dives ahead. Another big hole. Burst open by the offensive line by the Chargers. And Dow High strikes pay dirt. They're going to go for two. It is 12 0 right now. They had missed the extra point on the first touchdown. And so uh, here, right at the end of the half, to try to to make up for that by going for two. Kind of like the call, actually. Oh, yeah, They've I had great too. success uh, with third or with uh, three yard plays. And they set the ball on the right hash, the left hash, so they can run right. It's going to be some sort of a rollout, and I'm going to bet with motion. Grosick in the shotgun. Here's your motion. And there he's Grosick rolling to the right. He's got a man open. Caught. Oh! Couldn't tell if he dropped it or if it was not loose at the last second. He dropped it. The play was there. He dropped it. Good throw by Groshek, uh, but uh, the extra point attempt failed. Take another look at the touchdown run. This is really a good read by the tailback. He's going to get up into the chute. This is a counter sweep. And Donnie Doughty cleared out, cleared out his whole area, and Caleb Richard took care of business. Doughty kind of just, he's left tackle clearing everybody out to the right, <laughs> creating this big hole. Very impressive half by Doughty. And so the Chargers, um, it almost seems fittingly that they got a touchdown there at the end because the yardage and time of possession we don't have official stats, but uh, just totally dominated by the Chargers. The uh, really the defensive effort by Dow. I don't know that the Hawks. They may not be in positive yardage on offense. They still are not in positive yardage. No. And so, 41.4 seconds remaining in the half. Now High will kick off. Again, it's Darren Savage, number 76, doing the kickoff duties. Little squib kick. It's received at the 36. It's returned out to the 45. It was uh, Josh Kallendike on the return for the Hawks. So you think uh, Heritage will try to uh, uh, put it in the air right well, here I would to try say to make right something now, happen? With 36 seconds, I'd be looking for number one. Uh, he has been open. They just haven't been able to get him in the ball. One is Brian Cole. He uh, comes into the game with uh, 11 catches, averaging 20.5 yards per reception, four touchdowns. So he is a big play threat. 
Evans, number nine, has caught five passes for Heritage. And I'd be looking for one, and I'd be doubling one. And figure, okay, the other guys just don't catch Deal the ball. Well, you know, or if you catch we'll, it, the chance we'll of a cover, big play. Yeah, we'll cover, we'll cover the other guys one on one, and we'll put two on one on Cole. Figuring yeah. that even if they break one, you're not going to run away from us. The Dow High defense, it would be tough to play a better half than they have here in Absolutely. the first half. Absolutely. They're, they're uh, sixth in the league in defense for total yards, but uh, at the rate this game is going, they're going to move up the well, charts. The biggest problem with that is that Mount Pleasant rolled up 450 yeah. on them. Right. And that that really hurts when the team puts it in that. Find number one. Tiflin back to pass. Goes down the right sideline looking for Binder. Overthrows him. Flag on the play. And there's going to be a penalty. Oh, well, yeah, there is a flag, and that's in the vicinity of holding, usually. Well, they're talking to I the Heritage roughing players. The, roughing the passer. Oh, boy. Yeah, I think you're right. Face mask. Face he only mask. marks in, off in, five in, yards. Inadvertent yeah. face mask. Five yard penalty. Well, I guess there isn't such a thing as an inadvertent. It's either did or you, you did didn't. You did or you didn't. And it's just the degree of did you do it or not? <laughs> did you slap his face mask or did you just yank his <laughs> neck off? <laughs> so first and five for the Hawks. 30 seconds to go. Tiflin back to pass, got his man. It's a first down, driven out of bounds. Joel Miller drives out uh, McCarrick, but uh, Heritage picks up a first down on the play, the first first down of the game. So now it's on the 39. Heritage threatening here in the closing seconds of the half, just desperately trying to make something positive happen. And Tiflin back to pass. Same play, same result. It picks up about seven. And it's McCarrick driven out of bounds by Miller. 19.7 seconds remaining. All down to the 33. At some point, they're going to have to do a little bit more than that, though. Not, not much time left. Mates, mates the uh, pump and go, possibly. Well, now is also the time when I drop the outside linebackers off, uh, take away that undercover, especially on the short side where they've been throwing. He's looking for girl. There's the hitch and go, and they're going to go for it all. Pass up, and it's picked off. Intercepted by Brennan Miller. With 12 seconds remaining in the half, they're going to spot the ball at the one, it looks like. That was a real athletic play by Miller. It was. He went up into the air. Great. Time, timed it just perfectly and made the play. Well, great coverage by the Chargers. They did not bite on the pump fake. They had, uh, they had Cole bracketed really three charges around there. And uh, so great interception by Miller. Dow takes it on the one. I want to be careful here and uh, make sure they get some positive yardage. Well, this is a quarterback sneak. Yeah, for, no question. Just run the quarterback sneak. Groschick under center, it is a sneak. Just didn't, didn't gain anything, out. but that's okay. Just uh, don't want anything bad to happen, and the clock will run out on the first half. A terrific first half for Dow High, taking a 12 to nothing lead and controlling both sides of the ball throughout this half. Well, to be honest with you, the score is no indication of the domination that Dow Correct. had over right. Heritage. Uh, Dow has, com as, as we have said, has completely taken over the ball game offensively and defensively. It's only that last little spurt when Dow was going to give them everything underneath that Heritage did anything at all. Yep. 
uh, their offensive game plan is non-existent. <laughs> it's uh, you know, and, and as I said before, I thought their their rusher uh, Evans is a, is a, you know is 400 yards and has really doesn't have anything to show for it tonight. Their quarterback is uh, has thrown for a number of yards, um, but uh, 177 yards and and really has pretty good throwing ability, but he hasn't done anything except at the end. Well, we're going to send it on down to the field for the halftime entertainment. First up is the Dow High Charger Marching Band, and then we'll bring you all the, the homecoming festivities as well. Enjoy the, the Dow High Marching Band. marching band in the region and one of the most exciting bands in mid-Michigan, the H.H. H. Dow High School Charger Marching Band. We open this evening's halftime show with a great arrangement of a classic hit by the Jackson Five. Senior drum major Mark Gordy will conduct I'll Be There. And now we are pleased to welcome the Dow High School Pom Pom Squad to the field. They've prepared an exciting routine for what I like about you.
Last January, the Dow High Symphonic Band had the honor of performing at the State of Michigan's Music Conference in Grand Rapids. The final piece of music on that concert was Arabesque by Samuel Hazo. Tonight, we close our portion of the show with a special marching band arrangement of highlights from Arabesque. Senior drum major Katie Workman will lead the band through this challenging piece of music.
Ladies and gentlemen, the 2012 Delhi Choker Marching Band. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the 2012 Dow High School Homecoming Halftime Ceremony. At this time, it is our pleasure and honor to introduce the 2012 Dow High Charger Homecoming Court. Walking onto the field are the freshman class representatives and their parents from the class of 2016. Marina Haddad is the daughter of Fernando and Paula Haddad. Justin Savage is the son of Sasha and Heather Savage. <laughs> Sam Workman is the son of Eric and Ann Workman. <laughs> and Sophia Lobo is the daughter of Andres, and Lo Andres Lobo and Veronica Kemp. <laughs> Congratulations to the freshman class representatives and their families. Representing the class of 2015, Becca Biltz is the daughter of George and Bev B Blitz. <laughs> Brett Brillhart is the son of Kurt and Christine Brillhart. Carly D'Alessandro is the daughter of Chris and Amy D'Alessandro. Jared Skinner is the son of Michael and Amy Skinner. Congratulations to the 2015 class representatives and their families. On the field next are our 2014 class representatives. Please welcome Abby Drumright. She is the daughter of Ray and Susan Drumright. Alex Enzer is the son of Rick and Ann Enzer. Ashley Housen is the daughter of Chad and Melissa Housen. And Jason Chang is the son of Chung Mig and Sun Lee Chang. Jason is being escorted by Mrs. Kim Outen, the Dow High Student Union Advisor. <laughs> Congratulations to the junior class representatives and their families. The Dow High School homecoming king and queen will be selected from the following candidates. The following student students are representatives of their senior class. Katie Workman is the daughter of Eric and Ann Workman. She has been involved, been involved in Charger Marching Band, Symphonic Band, Key Club, National Honor Society, and her church's Young Women's Program. Katie is planning on attending Brigham Young University next fall and hopes to major in English. Sydney Walker is the daughter of Scott and Lori Walker. She is a member of the Symphony Orchestra, Cross Country Team, National Honor Society, Sad Save Club, and Big Brothers Big Sisters. She is considering University of Michigan or Michigan State to pursue a degree in psychology. Deborah Ferriera is the daughter of Omar and Lisa Ferriera. She is involved in Cross Country, National Honor Society, and Sad Save. She plans to attend Grand Valley State University and hopes to become a psychiatrist. Mark Gordy is the son of John and Mary Gordy. Mark is involved in varsity tennis, is a drum major in the marching band, and a Renfair MC. He is unsure of his college choice at this time, but is exploring Hope College, Denison, Elon, Wooster, and DePaul. Next is Alex Huss. Alex is the son of Mike and Denise Huss. Alex is involved in varsity football and National Honor Society. He is planning on attending Michigan State University. And Alan Corbet is the son of Alan and Yahida Corbet. 
Allen is involved in football, young life, lacrosse, and CCL basketball. He is planning on attending Michigan State University to, to study civil engineering. Last year's homecoming queen, Miss Elizabeth Wolford, is unable to be with us this evening and sends her congratulations to the homecoming court this evening from Michigan Tech University. <laughs> Mr. Kimball Ostergaard, last year's king, sends his best wishes from Utah and Brigham Young University. This year's king and queen will be crowned by the senior class advisors, Mr. Ted Davis and Mrs. Jamie Cressman. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2012 Dow High School Homecoming King is Mr. Alex Hutz. And ladies and gentlemen, the 2012 Dow High School Homecoming Queen is Miss Katie Workman. A bouquet of yellow roses is being presented to the H.H. Dow High 2012 Homecoming Queen Katie Workman on behalf of the Dow High student body and staff by our Dow High principal, Mrs. Pamela Castle. Mrs. Castle is also presenting the Charger Bolt to our 2012 Homecoming King. Ladies and gentlemen, we present to you the 2012 Dow High School Homecoming Court. So a uh, great job by the Dow High Marching Band as always, and congratulations to the homecoming court uh, for Dow High 2012. And this is Dave Marsh, along with Frank Aldemore, bringing you the action uh, today. And we're gonna take a look at some of the first half highlights uh, from today. Well, this, this is, is the, the first play of the game right here, where Alex Huss is gonna take the ball. King Alex Huss yeah, he's is, gonna, nice night. is gonna take the ball and run right almost into the end zone. And this is where he kind of catches, the hip catches and the foot catches. And uh, he made a great run there. I mean, it really set the tone for the whole first half. And then here he is making his move into the end zone for a touchdown. He's having quite a night. Two touchdowns, a big run. No homecoming king. And this is Lucas Burrell just barreling his way on a fake punt. And I, uh, I, 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 that was a great call right there. And again, here's Burrell coming up in there, and then he's going to get stripped of the ball. And you see, that's what, we were talking about that earlier about that ball hanging out mm -hmm. there. Uh, you know, you talk about pressure points on the ball. Well, we only have one pressure point. Anything can happen. That's exactly what happened. The ball get up in the air. And the same thing will happen later on. And this is an excellent tackle here. And then a pickup by uh, Brennan Miller. Yeah, Gabe Miller on the with the big hit. 
They're leading toward this, to this touchdown run. And it's a good snap into the end zone by King Huss. <laughs> King Huss. And in this play, last play of the game, and this is an outstanding interception, goes up into the air and, of course, bracketed by three people. And so a, uh, a first half dominated by the Chargers that we had, had mentioned. Um, very little yardage for Heritage. They, they got into positive yardage right at the end there. Um, but uh, really not a big threat. And meanwhile, the Chargers running game in particular, just uh, showing great power and, uh, and strength and determination. Now let's take a look at the, the keys of the game that you had brought up at the start here. Okay, Coach. these are the kind of things I think as we, you break down film and you, you look at stats, you say, okay, what do you have to do to win the ball game in the first half? Does Dow control the line of scrimmage? <laughs> yes, no absolutely. Did they convert on third down and stop the other team? Yes, absolutely. Are we getting a big game from Grosset? Yes, absolutely. And those are the kind of things you look at and you say, okay, can we continue this? Now we're into the pattern of it. And for Heritage, as we uh, look at theirs, did their defense show up? No, it stayed on the bus. <laughs> did it force Dow to pass? Even when it did, the Dow guys were open. It, it was a matter of a couple drop passes. Are they winning the turnover game? Yes. They've gotten a couple of fumbles, uh, and their punting game has been outstanding. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, it, and to tell you the truth, if I'm Dow, I'm not going to touch that ball. I'm going to let I'm going to let him kick and uh, and just let it let it bounce because it's so hard for a high school re a returner to catch an outstanding punter. Yeah. And we've got an outstanding punter right here. And uh, really, Heritage winning the turnover game has kept them in it, really. I mean, Absolutely. It is uh, it is just 12 nothing, so it's, it's not like uh, it's a blowout on the scoreboard, um, even though statistically it's uh, been all Chargers. And uh, and so we'll see if the uh, if Dow High can uh, continue that trend here in the second half. Dow will uh, will get the ball to start things out. Yeah, they really the game started off uh, couldn't have been any better for Dow. They, they kicked off. It was a three and out, just like that. Um, received the ball, big play on the first offensive play for Dow, and there was no looking back. Actually, the big play in that was uh, Alex Huss getting the first down on a on a long yardage right. third down, yes. and that that allowed them another shot at getting into the end zone. Yeah. I will say this: I think Dow's got to do a better job of kicking off, and if they're going to kick off with a squib kick. They're going to do a better job of the coverage, yeah. Because they had an opportunity on that one kick there to, you know, if you know where you're going to kick it, and you know how you're going to kick it, then you know you should be able to cover that. Uh, that guy very nearly broke it. If if he had any sort of skills, he would have broken that because Dow's coverage was not as good as it could have been. If you're going to kick like that, then you have to be able to accept it. Now they're going to get the ball. Heritage is going to get the ball, and We'll see what their kick coverage is. Because we haven't seen it yet. Right. Spradlin doing the kickoff duties, and if his if he's as good of a kickoff man as he is a punter, he could send one deep here. And that's a squib kick. And that's recovered at the 30 and a hole. Nice job uh, bursting ahead Again, with Zach Hook. If you're going to kick like that, you have to have better coverage. You have to be able to say to yourself, I mean, they had six guys on the outside of the hash with, yeah. you and know, squib it up the middle. And squib it up the middle. Surprising, unless they just figured it's into a, into a stiff wind and maybe he didn't think he could uh, really boom it. But uh, Dow High has great field position to start the second half here on their own 45. Groshek rolls his right, finds his man. It's uh, Brandon with the completion. First mixing it up here a little bit, throwing on first down, a nice uh, six-yard gain. I love those, those little hooks and 
uh, little rolls out, make it nice and easy. Don't make it too hard on them. Loosens it up, uh, up the middle a little bit when you have to respect the short passing game. Pitch to Huss. Goes left, cuts up. He's trying to drive in. A flag comes flying in. He was short of the first down. I think we're going to have a holding on number 34. So very few pen penalties in the first half. We said we were, I believe there were th only three he called in the whole first half. Very quick first half. And this will be marked off against the Chargers. Yeah, it's going to be a hold. Sends the ball back to the 41. It'll be second and 14. So big penalty for Dow High. Those are mean penalties. When you have positive yards and you get up where you're going to have it close to a first down, now you're into a second and long. Yeah, it was going to be third and probably one or two. Now you got second and, uh, yeah, it just changes everything with your play calling. Wouldn't be terribly surprised to see that same play. They've had a lot of success with that running Huss to the left. And it is Huss to the left. Weaves his way ahead. Nice job. And uh, I just really like how Huss runs. He, he follows his blockers. He's patient. And then when he sees the opening, he's got the, that quick burst of speed to get positive yardage. Very good. Now here comes that crucial, which we talked third about, that crucial third and four. Yeah. And they have been successful running both Huss and Burrell today. It will be Huss, the tailback, Alan Corbet, the fullback in front of him. And it will be Huss left again. He's got the first down. Boy, that offensive line just doing a tremendous job over there on the left side. Donnie Doty mm. owns the left side. He is clean down, and we've had you know good pull up through, and Husk is able to find that hole on the counter sweep, and, and Heritage can't stop it. Yeah, the Doughty, um, Rogowski doing a great job as uh, blocking from his tight end position. Thompson, the left guard. It's a completed pass. And uh, he finds Hook. Good crisp pass by uh, Groshek. The play calling is nice where they're putting him in a position to succeed on his passing game, exactly. not asking him too exactly. much. And uh, keeping that defense honest. Throwing to the field. Lots of room for him to maneuver. If he doesn't like it, he's got the ability to run. Ball down just inside the 37. It's a quick hitter. Corbet, the ball carrier, it's gonna be really close. But he's gonna be a little short. I'm gonna call that third and less than a yard. Dahai starting the second half the way they played the whole first half. Just a good, solid game plan. Great execution. Huss runs left. Oh, spun down. That time, play was blown up. Bronson Williams, number 34, got in immediately. Shot the gap. And that'll bring up a fourth and two. He's going to actually lose a yard on the play. It's really four down territory right here. Well, yep. Lucas Burrell is in the ball game, so you got a pretty good idea of He's what the play is and who's going to be the carrier. He's your guy on these short yard oh, situations. Oh, absolutely. He's very difficult to stop. He does check in. 
And tailback. Ooh, fake handoff. Groshek's got it. He's a cut up. He's got the first down. So they faked a handoff that sucked in that defensive line and that quick feed of Groshek find the edge. Good enough for another Dow High first down. Big clutch play on big fourth play. down. Very big play. Seven and a half minutes remaining in the third quarter. And again, we able to keep the ball. And that's the eat the clock up, maintain your control of that line of scrimmage, and they don't get the football. That's been the most their impressive defense, thing is moving the chains. Their down. defense is just control. There's and Huss again, yeah. driving ahead. Good lead block by Corbet, the fullback. Seven yard carry. This is just really good execution by the Chargers. The, it, particularly the left side of that line, the tight end, fullback, the blocking has been phenomenal, and the running back's doing a great job of using it. So a ball on the 19, second and two. Dow high up, 12 nothing, looking for more. Again, the left side. This time it is uh, Ellibrecht on the carry. And he finds the hole, and he's going to move the chains as well. So it'll be first and 10 from the 13 yard line. Dow Height is eating up that clock. You look at the time of possession numbers, it's uh, this is going to be one of the more lopsided games you're going to see, at least so far. Ella Brock to carry again on the left side. He's got room. Darts ahead. He's got some quick feet, too. He's going to pick up about five. Nice first down gain. Bring up second and five. It's not only time of possession, it's the number of plays mm. that you're running. You know what I mean? You know, you never get tired on offense. You only get tired on defense. If that's the case, Heritage has got to be exhausted. Oh, man. They got, they got to have to take three days off. <laughs> Brandon split wide to the right. Number eight. Took wide to the left. Huss runs left. And finds Paydirt again. A third touchdown of the day for Huss. And the that left side of the line is just blowing holes open. Oh, amazing. They're and, doing a great and, job. But you know what's beautiful? They're making the hole, and he's finding and the And he's hole. finding That's what I he mean. He is finding the hole. The, the execution is impressive. Devin Thompson, left guard, Doughty. The left tackle, they just have, uh, right early on, the game plan was run left. They found success, and they're just uh, saying they're going to run it until it gets stopped. And that just has not happened so far. 5.25 remaining in the third quarter. Dow High up 18-0. They're going to go for two once again. Huss runs left. Nope, nothing doing there. Again, that was uh, Bronson Williams, the senior linebacker, uh, blowing that up. And so the third touchdown of the game for Huss. Haven't made an extra point yet, but uh, now high firmly in control. Let's take a look at the touch. Right, this, this is the, the fourth down. down. This, yeah, this is the fourth, fourth down, down run right here. And right there, it is a little mm -hmm. move that makes the yeah. person fan. We used to call that punching your ticket. As you run by him, please punch your ticket. <laughs> and then this is the touchdown run again, up into the chute, and that, there's that surge and that acceleration. And I am really happy to see this because I was afraid he injured himself in the very first yeah, play no, of the game. Sure doesn't look injured. Justin Scott, Chase McNamara also with big blocks on the touchdown play from their offensive line positions. They are in on the action as well. 
So now we'll kick off Savage. I don't see number 76 as the number for kicker all that often. Tau High band, you can hear them in the background loving every minute of this game. Another squib kick fielded by Spradlin, and he's going to get a pretty good gain on the return out beyond the 40 to the 43. So Heritage will have some good field position there. First possession of the second half. Now I got the ball early and just uh, chewed up a lot of clock on the 55-yard uh, drive. So Heritage looking to make a comeback, but it's hard to come back if you don't have the ball. Quick run. A uh, nice pickup by... M Marquine Evans on first down. That was probably their best first was, down play of the their, game. That was their best run of the game, and mm -hmm. that's the first time we've seen uh, what number nine can do. And he's been a good runner all year. Picked up about uh, six or seven on the play. Corbet on the stop. The handoff again, trying to get outside. Great job defensively. Joel Miller on the stop. Runs down uh, Evans. He's desperately trying to get the edge, but uh, Miller just ran him down. A good sure tackle. It'll bring up a third down. Third and two for the Hawks. Billy really Shooty, number nine. Out of the game. Replaced, I believe that's Doughty. Enough to Evans, drives, and whoa, it's gonna, it looks they're like gonna they're going to give him the spot. Yep, they're going to give it A to generous him. spot. Um, but that will be a first down for the Hawks. You know, the interesting thing about Heritage, you think about their last three weeks. They played Midland to 7-0 in a very close ball game. They very nearly beat Bay City Western and really should have. They had, uh, an op had three or four opportunities to put that game away and didn't. And last week they beat Arthur Hill 62-12, to which Dow only beat Arthur Hill 12-0. Yeah. So, you know, where where is the real heritage at? You know, <laughs> did they... They're starting to show a little bit of spark here in this drive, but it just may be uh, a, a little too late. There's a fumble on the play. Fumble on the play. Scrum for the ball. At, uh, Heritage will recover. But boy, they show a little bit of life right here and uh, a miscue right there. And uh, it's like they're back starting from scratch. That's got to hurt. Billy Shooty, number nine, back in at the uh, no guard, nose guard position. Defensive front. And up to Cole. There's a work away, and he's shoved down. That's uh, Rogowski on the tackle. A nice pickup for the Hawks right there. I see. We can see why Cole has made the yards that he's made. He's a he's a very explosive runner, very explosive player. It's gonna be third, and you can call that a long one or a short two. Really big play for Heritage. Well, regardless, they're gonna get two plays here. Yeah, they have true. to. They have to go. For, no matter what else happens. Quick hitter. And it's going to be close. 
Ellen Hooper on the stop for the Chargers. He's going to be, be short. short. Yeah. Carmichael, the carrier, had a little bit of good sur surge, but a great job by Hooper to haul him down. It'll be fourth and very short. Call that a, just under a yard. Heritage desperately needs his first down. Dowhai trying not to give them any life. Quarterback sneak, and he's, he's going to have the first. Good call on fourth and one. Kind of a quick snap, quarterback sneak. And uh, and Tiflin able to surge ahead and pick up the first down. Ball on the 36-yard line. A minute 26 remaining in the third quarter. Just joining us, this is the Dow High homecoming game, 2012. Quick pitch to Evans, drives ahead. Pretty good pick up there on first down. Late flag on the play. Ah, this may go against Heritage. Well, we'll see. Two officials threw flags after the play. That's gonna be a frustration penalty. Officials discussing yeah. which way, what to do with this one. Could be one of those where they goes against each team. Still discussing it. Person foul against the chair. Yeah, both ways. Took a long time to determine that uh, it's a wash. And you knew it right at the beginning. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well. It'll be second and five then. Well, I'll make it second and four. Heritage has shown quite a bit of life in this drive. Yeah. They they've, you know, moved the ball along. And sometimes, you know, the game gets going like this. And you're at this point in the game into the fourth quarter, almost into the fourth quarter. And you kind of lose a little bit of that intensity. You get a three touchdown lead. Well, you said uh, in the beginning, Heritage, maybe not getting off the bus right at seven o'clock. But uh, like you said, they are showing signs of life here. You so got to, got to be ready. To under play. a minute to go in the third. And Tiflin, he's got Cole. He's got the first down. He had the first down. Yeah, he's got it. He swung around and uh, finally hauled down. But uh, another first down for Sagana Heritage. Miller was able to uh, wrangle him out of bounds. Clock is running. This is the deepest penetration for heritage of the evening. It's pitched to Evans. Oh, nice job out there on the Beautiful edge. Beautiful job on the edge and great pursuit to the ball. Yeah, it was uh, Caleb Richard on the play. Caleb Richard makes a lot of plays. He, he's, he may not make a lot of tackle, but he does stuff up a lot of plays. He's just a sophomore, Coach. He's a good player. He had two brothers that have uh, played football here for the Chargers over the years. And uh, the third quarter comes to an end. The Dow High up 18 to nothing. You're watching this Saginaw Heritage Dow High Charger homecoming football game, uh, game on MT MPS TV 98 in Midland. The game will be cable cast on the following dates and times. Saturday, October 6th at 11.30 a.m. Sunday, October 7th at noon and 8.30. And you can see the 9th through the 13th at 11.30 a.m. and 10 o'clock p.m. For more dates and times to follow, check the Midland Public Schools website 
at www.mps.k12.mi.us. As you can see there on your screen, the uh, MCT volunteers and staff uh, will also be bringing you the Midland High Dow High City Championship game. That's on October 19th. I'd also like to throw a special thanks out to Domino's Pizza for providing dinner for the crew tonight. Boy, that, that hit the spot too, that pizza, didn't it? I don't eat pizza. Today. You don't eat pizza? <laughs> All right, well, it hit the spot for me, that's for sure. And so here we go, the start of the fourth quarter. Heritage driving ahead, the quarterback, Van Tiflin, keeps it, and he's going to get about six yards. They've been much more efficient on first down. That's only the second time we've seen that play where Van Tiflin keeps the ball yeah. in the option. It's not, game's not over yet. I would say it is, would be imperative for Heritage to score here. Heritage needs to score here. Dow needs to stop him. Because a shutout would really set Dow's defense for the next couple weeks. Sometimes you have to send a statement out there mm -hmm. that you're not dead yet. Big hole up the middle. It's Evans going to pick up another first down. So uh, doing nothing, re really nothing in the first half. Heritage, um, oddly, this is just their first possession of the second half. And we are into the fourth quarter. This drive looking a lot like Dow High did for much of the game. Evans again. They get about four. They're running a little cross bucking action in the backfield, and Dow's defensive tackles have come up field so much that they're running right by them. Ten thirty nine remaining in the ball game. Heritage trying to make a game of it here. Back to pass. It was a fade up and no good. Drop Groshik on the coverage as was Miller. I had a shot at that, that one. Good. They they definitely had a good shot, try. but he was unable to haul it in. That was one of those plays. It was good pass, good coverage, and uh, just worked out Dow's way. Brings up third and seven. Balls on the nine. It's Evans again, still on his feet, cuts back up, fumbles the ball. Heritage is going to recover. Good, strong run by uh, Evans there. He was hit quickly. Yeah, he broke he was an able arm. To break he a broke tackle. an arm tackle, and then then that got got him back into that. Where remember with Lucas Burrell, where the, the ball swings right. out. Uh, you break a tackle sometimes. Your arm starts to swing out, and you get a piece of it. Fourth down. Twenty-five. Rysick in on the interior line for Dow. Fourth and one. Quarterback sneak. I don't think he made it. Uh, it's going to depend no, on the he spot. Didn't make it. No didn't indication make it. so far. But he, he may have made oh, they the gave, first yep. down. They, they gave, gave it the to first him, down. Yep. Gets down inside the two-yard line. Here comes Shooty, number nine, back into the game. He's a pesky guy there on that defensive line. Nine and a half remaining. First and goal, Hawks. Quarterback sneak again. Drives ahead. Touchdown, Touchdown. Heritage. They've run that uh, quarterback sneak very efficiently. That's methodical drive there by Heritage. We almost had them written off. For well, dead, but all of a sudden uh, they what they have found a drive what they, just like Dow's. What they found was 
running cross buck. Send the full back one ways and the tail back the other. Bring the guard up into the hole and you've got yourself some pretty good holes because the Dow defense has stopped doing what they did in the first half and that is jam to the inside. They are up and they are deep into the backfield. And so the team, so the uh, Heritage is running right by them. You don't have to block a guy who's four yards deep in the backfield. Right. And standing up. They, they weren't standing up earlier. Offsides on Dow. Bradlin will stay out and uh, still attempt the extra point. And Tiflin with a hold. Low snap. Bradlin gets it off. It's up and good. Good job by Van Tiflin to uh, to pick up that low snap and uh, get it set for Spradlin. So just like that, it is 18 to seven. Well, we'll see. Uh, well, well, first we'll take a look at the quarterback sneak. Um, they've done a really good job with that play. They have a good surge. Yeah. And uh, so now we'll see. The, the Hawks really have not been able to stop Dow um, really at all tonight. Let's face it. There's been a couple of couple of turnovers. Um, so let's see if Dow can just keep keep things rolling here. 18-7, nine and a half remaining in the ball game. Things have been going all Dow's way. Crowd me be feeling a little bit nervous here. See how that Dow offense responds. Joel Miller back deep to receive the kick. Spraddling the kicker. This time he boots it, fielded at the 15. There's a hole up the middle. Good return. Very good return. For the Chargers, good. that was Travis McNally. Not only a good return, but some good blocking in there that, yeah. that allowed them to get up into the chute. Yeah, they really did a good job just uh, taking it, run forward as hard as he can, or as long as he can, and he gets it out uh, to the 36. Thank you, Mary, for your kindness and generosity. Groshek in the shotgun. Handoff. Oh, big defensive play by Brunson Williams. We've called his name quite a bit tonight as well. Ellibrecht did not have much of a chance on that one. That's going to be a two-yard loss. And Ellibrecht's been uh, in there the last couple yeah, series yes. instead of Huss. Is that just to give Huss a breather or uh, if he's banged up a little bit? Could be. Could be give him a chance. First off, you got a, a good lead with yeah. eight minutes to go in the ball game. Groshek keeps it. His quick feet trying to find something, but there was no room to run. Okay, now this is a, this is a problem. You got a third and thirteen. You've got to make the first time. If you don't make the first time, they're going to get the ball back. And now they're going to drive. Now they have to answer. If they drive the ball and drive the field, it's 18 14. Mm -hmm. Now you've got another situation. So this is a crucial not only are we going to make it, but what happens on the punt right. and what happens to your defense in, uh, in the ensuing series. Third and 13. Dow High is going into the win. Wind is just enough to be a factor. Quick handoff and trying to break loose is Corbet, but just was nothing there. Picks up a couple, very a conservative play call. Prob probably a good idea. Instead of just uh, chucking it too far downfield, but that will punt. <laughs> Dahai has not, I don't know if they punted today. This they is did the a fake, this they did this a fake punt earlier. Punt, right. It's uh, Travis McNally is the punter. Uh, 
And uh, the spiral, a bit of a short kick. Took uh, Dow bounds, it hit the Dow player in the back. And uh, Heritage that will have good field position here. 20 yard kick. And that gives Heritage the ball at a crucial place in the, on the field. Inside the 50, but still in a situation where they're going to be in, you know, in, that, in that 50 range. You have to drive half the field instead of most right. of the field. That's why I keep saying the, the Spradlin is, is, a weapon. is a weapon. I mean, he, he takes that same kick and, yeah. and it's now it's down. 30 yards to Yeah. And those are hard yards. These are now easy yards because all you have to do is get across the 50 and you're in four down territory. Evans got a big hole and bursts ahead for a first down. Brought down by McNally and Miller. But uh, okay, Heritage wow. just woke up. They sure have. Heritage has got off the bus. Sent the JVs home, brought the varsity back. <laughs> They're all wearing the same numbers. Well, on the 42, under seven minutes to go. Evans again. Same play. Another hole. And this he is, goes ahead for about nine. This is the same play that they ran down the field to, to score their touchdown. A little bit of cross buck and the Evans running to the right. Where Dow had just uh, run to the left over and over again with success. The Hawks have uh, now found um, something that's working here. This time a sweep. There's a big hole still on his feet is Cole. And a big gain for Heritage. Down inside the 20 yard line. I would have to say that momentum has completely shifted in this game. And although the Dow is ahead 18 to seven, I am now very concerned at this point. It's, it's changed shockingly, really, because it was all Dow for three quarters of the game, basically. You can see a little more giddy up in the step of the Heritage players. There's Evans. Oh, he slipped, fumbles the ball. Whoa, boy, that could have been huge for the Chargers. Evans slipped and coughed it up. Um, still a big play for Dow because that's a three yard loss. Deep in Charger territory and the clock continues to run. Remember Heritage has to score twice. Clock runs, and now you've got a second and 14. Heritage might need to show a little more urgency I'd look here. for number one here to get the ball. I hope it's going to be Evans. Oh, good job defensively by the Chargers. Look like that was uh, Tyler Reisick on the stop. Yeah, Heritage is going to call. Oh, there's an injury on the play. It's officials timeout. Evans. That is Evans. Ooh. Ball back. Touching the 23 or maybe just inside. Trainers attend to Evans. who's had a... Uh, hadn't done anything early on. It's just uh, really come to life here in the second half. Well, if you'd like to, uh, while we have a break in the action, uh, the coverage of the of this H.H. Dow football game is being produced by MCT volunteers and staff. If you'd like to work on shows like this one, come to the next orientation uh, studio training class on the second Saturday in October. It's the 13th of October from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Cost is just $45, which includes the annual access user fee. Call 837-3474 or come down to MCTV Studio in the lower level of the Grace A. Dow Memorial Library. You can learn more about MCTV at www.midland-mi.org backslash MCTV or you can follow MCTV on Facebook. 
Evans being uh, helped off the field. That's a big that loss for Heritage. A, that is an enormous loss for Heritage fact, because he had just started to run. That is a, and he also opened things up for Cole when he, he was, they'd had him coming around the end. Um, so they need somebody to step up. Blake Carmichael who's had a big game on defense. Number 32 takes his place. Back to pass, throws it up deep and it's inter almost intercepted, broken up. It was Miller, an identical play to what we had at the end of the first half. Miller intercepted that one. This time he went up high once again, but as he came down, the ball popped loose. I see that, that's a good play if you want to do it earlier, but you know, it's third and 23 and uh, you've got uh, third and 14. 14 and you've got a lot of yards, Dallas playing soft. Yeah, they need to try to get need to, half of that. In the exactly. Third, third down. Because now their play well, calling is limited. Get the ball to Cole and let him get your yards. So coach Don Maloney, the head coach of Heritage, is calling timeout. The, uh, we had mentioned uh, Dow High's head coach, Jason Watkins. They've had a brilliant game plan in this game today. It's worked to perfection. Assistant coaches, Dirk DeBoer, Phil Ligab, Lee Kamen, and the rest of that Charger staff doing a great job. You mentioned Dow High is, comes into the game at three and three, with three games remaining. So you need to get six to guarantee a playoff spot. So they need to take it one game at a time and try to get one win each week for the next three weeks to make those playoffs. And with 5.06 remaining here, an 18-7 lead. Dow High trying to hang on uh, for that fourth win of the year. They're going to try a field goal. 40-yard field goal attempt. Well, we know Spradlin's got a good leg. And they do need to score twice. So we shall see. Kick is up, and it is wide left. He just had the distance, but uh, Spradlin's kick goes wide left with five minutes remaining. So Dow dodges a bullet. D Spradlin has the leg. The snapper no. has, has really done some very poor snapping Vin for as good a kicker as he is. I mean, you have to have a snapper that doesn't put the ball on the ground. He has, it forced a kicker to have a little hesitation mm -hmm. there and on their extra point. Yeah. And Tiflin doing a great job as right. a holder. Right. Really not a bad decision because they needed uh, down by 11. If you get that field goal, you're eight points down. You could still score and tie two. with that two point conversion. But Dow takes over and we'll uh, see what happens here. Is they're going to try just to put together a drive to run that clock out. This time it's Huss going on the left side. He's got room around the end. Big gain on first down for Huss. Most of the game he cuts that up, but uh, it was sealed off. And so he uh, used those quick feet to get to the outside. Tremendous run. And uh, Huss takes it all the way to the 39. That is a real first class run at a time when you really need it. That is huge for Dow and devastating for Heritage. Huss again, running left. Cuts it outside, cuts up this time. We're gonna keep that clock running. Good, that's a nice gain on first down. Very good. Out to the 45, about six yards. Haas having one great night tonight. He would have a great night even if he wasn't named Homecoming King today. Exactly. I mean, that just tops it for him. <laughs> it I mean, that just makes it, you know. 
an ice cream sundae, and he's got a, he's got, <laughs> he's a got perfect the chair he's got a perfect night. <laughs> Broshek under center. He's going to roll right. Oh, nice job by Groshek. Wow. There was nothing there, it appeared. And he found a little seam and just uh, accelerated through it to get another first down. One more first down. This is a beautiful run. There's nothing to the outside. He sees this little seam to the inside. And they've got it on there. There makes the cut, and there he, and that's what he does best. Problem is the linebacker went for Huss. Look, he, he thought Huss still had the ball, and he ran right by Groshek. Ball down to the 44. 340 remaining in the game. It's Huss running left. This time he's hauled down by Carmichael. But at this point, every play, every play takes choose up time. Every play now takes a minute. You don't get up real fast and stay in the huddle to the last possible second. Every play has to take a minute. Till the don't be in a the rush. Signal. They just signal right there at 3:11. Signal the play clock. Groshek taking his time. See what he'll do is watch the back judge who keeps the the play clock. Fumbles Fumble. the ball. Oh my goodness! Heritage over Heritage cover. Heritage has the ball. Wow. Not sure what happened there. Well, Heritage will take over. Faint heartbeat. See now, this Still is where. for them. Please do not run the play. Don't even come out of the huddle until you have to, because you know you, you got delayed. He was waiting, 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 and the ball gets snapped. Yeah, he was waiting for the back judge to raise his arm right. to show Just five seconds. That takes left. your mind off it. Remember what I said. To Cole, Cole. Cole was going to end up taking nine yeah. spot. Yep. And be a part of the the inability of Van Tiflin to pass e yeah. efficiently is going to be their downfall. Yeah. Burrell on the tackle, seven yard gain. Now, they, Her they had to move faster than this. Heritage has made a better game out of this than they deserve. Yeah. And you're right. Heritage is in a lethargic end of the game mood instead of a sense of urgency. He's going to go deep. First. And there's a flag on the play. That might uh, be offense. I'm going to say it's offense. That was great coverage by Groshek. Uh, McCarrick, the receiver, the ball overthrown. And uh, well, it's got to be offensive, doesn't it? Yes, Heritage, moving Heritage back. is moving back. Yeah, they know it. Can't really blame McCarrick. He's trying to make something happen. Holding. Holding on. Holding on now. Pass interference. So it's offsetting penalties. Offsetting. Offsetting penalties. So defensive holding. Okay, well, it did take up a little more clock. Second and three, 206 remaining. Here is got to show a little more urgency. I mean, it would probably be a miracle, but we still have a chance. Cole. Juts up the sideline. He's going to get out of bounds. We'll stop the clock. He does pick up the first. Cole's got some giddy up in he his does. run. He does. He has giddy up in his run. 
Coach Watkins said that uh, Evans and Cole were dangerous players, and we haven't seen it. We didn't see it much in the first half, but uh, we have seen some good acceleration in, on, uh, from both of those guys. Cole, 6'3", 195. Evans, 6'1", 190. So they got some size. Cole's only a sophomore. There he goes again. Still on his feet and uh, knocked down out of bounds. First down. It will be a first down, Joel Miller on the tackle. We're under two minutes now. They just figure their best chance is to see if Cole can make something happen rather than putting it up. Passing game really has not happened tonight. Cole, just a sophomore. He's also the backup quarterback. Pitch to Cole. Oh, he stood up. Good play. Can call him down. That was uh, 55 again was uh, Gabe Miller. Boy, he's had some big sticks he tonight. Some big plays. Second 11, Heritage will call timeout. That might be their third. I have that officially, but 143, second and 11. What do you think they at least have to try to pass? I think. I mean, with you got to score twice here. I mean, well, if Carrick is a good receiver. Cole is a good receiver. The loss of Evans was a big loss yeah. for them. But, you know. It took them a little bit out of their game plan. They've tried it a couple of times going to Cole deep, and Dow has uh, had great coverage on it. But uh, with his size and athleticism, it seems like it's worth a shot. Because it's desperation mode, there's no question. Well, the, the point is we're under two minutes. We're in a two-minute drill. And two-minute drill says throw the ball short, get out of bounds. Throw the ball short get out of bounds, run a play, the perimeter, get out of bounds. And they're not doing it. Mm -mm. I mean, I'm to me, I'm saying, okay, I'm going to put Cole to wide out, put Carrick on the other side, figure out what side I want to throw to, get the ball on a five to eight yard out. He could throw that, and Dow's going to give it to him. Yeah, I mean, Dow's happy with what's happening here. You can see right now, well, there, Cole is there split goes out Cole wide split left. out wide left. Carmichael is the tailback. Your pitch is going to be a reverse to Cole. He's going to th throw back. Thought about throwing it. He's going to keep it. He's going to get some big yardage and run out of bounds. So the idea was First really down. to throw it back to Van Tiflin, but there was good pressure on Cole, forcing him to tuck it under and run. He does pick up uh, a nice gain down to the 23 and does get out of bounds. A minute 33 remaining. Here it is, I guess, figure they work their way down with their best plays, try, try to score, try to get the onside kick, and then try to hit a home run. But we'll see here. Again, looking to Cole. Hits the helmet, and it's going to be intercepted. I think it was, that was Groshik, I think. And it hit the helmet of one of the Chargers, and I think Groshik came down with it. I think it hit Cole's helmet. No, it hit no, it the, hit, it's right. It hit, hit the, Caleb Richard. Hit Caleb Richards. And uh, Groshik uh, alertly picks it off, goes down immediately, and with a minute 27 remaining, um, that should pretty much do it. I don't think Heritage has any timeouts left. Quick handoff to Corbet. I think there was a fumble. There was a fumble. There was a fumble. Dow recovers it. 
And oh, Heritage calls timeout. They they did have a timeout left. Wow, that was odd. So second and ten. Charger faithful seeing their team play an outstanding game tonight. Coach Watkins talking it over. I'm sure he's just saying, guys, hang on to the football. All they need to do is run a couple more plays and well, Heritage is now out of timeouts. Yeah, they they can't have nine. <laughs> you know, he just it just seems like they're they've hoping called, their officials they've called, lost they've track. They've called a lot of timeouts, <laughs> and you know, you only get three, <laughs> perhaps. So, it's always great to win your homecoming. You know, oh, those yeah. are the games that really are important. They're certainly the first game homecoming. City championship game. Those are all big games. And uh, that that grocery keeping it. He'll lose yards, but uh, the clock will yeah, run. Now we're down to a minute to go. And so with under a minute, third and 13. Dow High looking good to win their fourth here. They will have uh, Bay City John Glenn next week. Here. Here. Yeah, home game. Winnable game, I would say. Monster game over in but, Bay City Western. Yeah, Michigan. Midland High Midland at Bay City Western. Western. Roshik's going to keep it again, and that is going to do it. That is going to do it, folks. The Dow High Chargers will win their homecoming game, taking uh, control of this one early on, and uh, just an impressive performance, winning 18 to 7. Chargers improving to 4 and 3 on the year. Four and two in league play. Heritage falls to two and five overall, two and three in the Saginaw Valley League North. And so, as we mentioned, Dow taking on John Glenn next week. And if they uh, if they can get a victory there, that would just leave the city title game against Midland, where they'll be uh, seeking to to try to get that six win. So. A lot of big football games to be played here in the next two weeks with a lot on the line. And while uh, the two teams are shaking hands, we'll, uh, we'll take a look at some of the second half highlights here. And uh, Grocek keeps the ball around the corner and, and we're gonna see uh, that little cut yeah. right there. That always, that little cut always gives him five yards. On fourth down too, that was a big play. And it's a nice run by Alex Huss, gets up into the shoot, and then is in the end zone. And that, again, Alex Huss, what a game. Yeah. And this is quite a run here by Evans. And, you know, his injury was crucial to oh, yeah. their success. That forced them to do some things they didn't want to do, and they, they sneak it in. But, Dave, I got to tell you, you know, here we go with a, a sweep by Cole. He's going to be a good player. He is. I'd have to offer him a scholarship. <laughs> he is. See if he'd like to come to Dow. <laughs> and this is uh, uh, Alex Huss later in the game, back in the game, and yep. securing the game for Dow. And this is the great little run right here. Little stop and go. Look and at that. Mm, yeah. Nice job, Grochik. And finally, here we go. This is the... Ball hit off of uh, the helmet of Caleb the Dow Richard. player, Caleb Richard, and an interception by Grosso. And that did it right there. All right, now, this is Dow's best football game to date. Mm -hmm. They played excellent. They controlled the line of scrimmage. They made their third downs, and did we or did we not get a big game out of Grosso? Absolutely. And so when those things happen, when you say, okay, what do you have to do to win? And then you get three out of three, You've played yourself quite a ball game, so yeah. Well, yeah, the coaching staff got to be pleased with this one. 
Um, like you just mentioned, uh, those are the keys, and Dow uh, check, check, check on all three of those. Um, especially that third down conversion um, statistic, uh, very impressive right, right. as they were able to move the chains. And uh, we take a look down at the the uh, uh, the team, uh, the coaching staff as they uh, celebrate uh, uh, the victory, and the students down there ready to to give their uh, a team of, uh, some congratulations. And and so. Uh, we said uh, Dow High victors tonight, improving to four and three on the season. And uh, we will be back here, MCT, bringing you the Midland High versus Dow High game on October 19th. We'll look forward to that one. So once again, final score, Dow High 18, Saginaw Heritage 7. This is Dave Marsh and Frank Aldemore bringing you the action. Good night, everybody.